Hello everyone, this is Andy and welcome back to Electric Petrol Head. Now, the price of petrol doesn't change massively. It's gonna be a bit more expensive on a motorway and a bit cheaper in a supermarket. With electric cars, it's a little bit different and there's lots of different places you can charge. And if you want the car to charge quicker, you're probably gonna pay a little bit more. If you want a slow charge overnight, it's gonna cost you a little bit less. So I thought I'd put this video together. This is September 2020, a little rundown of charging in the UK from very expensive right through to negative. You what? Be paid to charge? Yeah. So hopefully you watch the whole video. If not, just skip to the negative section if you want to find out about that because that's really cool. Anyway, as always, comment below if you have any questions. Let's get on with it. So number 10 on our sort of top 10 countdown for a bit of fun is Ionity. Now Ionity are incredibly well funded. There's a, I think there's a bit of a consortium of lots of different manufacturers and companies behind them. They are not cheap. Their standard rate is 69p a unit. And that's a lot. Like there's really a lot. However, I believe, I'm not fortunate enough to own a Taken or something similar, but if you own certain cars and you get a card and you get it discounted, the company will subsidize. Now, the reason they're really cool is these are some of the best chargers on the market. So if I was, you know, driving and say a Tesla Model 3 through Europe and there wasn't a supercharger convenient on my route, I'd probably go to Ionity because I wouldn't be using it every day. But yeah, expensive, but really cool. Now the next one is Shell Recharge. Now, as an EV fan, I'm not a massive fan of the big oil giants, but let's be honest, BP Charge Master, Shell, they are coming into the electric world and that's gonna be a good thing. Now, the Shell Rechargers are rolling out well. Obviously, Shell have already got the locations, which is gonna be really useful. And they're looking about 39p a unit, so quite a bit cheaper than Ionity. Still, you know, at the higher end, but, they're good units and you've got an option to grab a coffee and something to eat from the Shell Garage, which is cool. So yeah, not the cheapest, but you know, not too bad and convenient. Now on to one of my favorites, this is Engini. Now, I really like what they're doing because they've done a partnership with Marston's Breweries and they've put their charges in pub car parks. Now, this is not so you can have about three or four pints and then jump in your car and drive home. No, this is perfect for pub lunches. That's just genius. So when Kate and I are planning road trips, if we want to stop for lunch, we're gonna be looking up the Engini sites on our way because we can charge the car, we can charge ourselves up, and there's zero time out from our journey because we'd be eating anyway. Really clever. So they're 36p a unit at the moment. I think that's a fair price. So it's good. And the location, great. Now I'm a really big fan of Instavolt. I've done another video on them, so please check that out. The thing about Instavolt is you pull into the services in Norfolk, for example, and there's eight Instavolts in a line. This means that you can have another seven cars charging and there's still a space for you, which is really good. You know, the price is 35p a kilowatt hour. It's so simple, you literally tap your debit or credit card on the machine. Um, it says, boom, ready, plug in, charges. Really simple, it's as close as a Tesla supercharger that non-Teslas can use. I'm really, really a big fan of them. Kate was as well, and we, as we drove off, we both said, if we're planning a long journey, we'd probably go to Instavol first. Really good chargers. So not the cheapest, but oh, yeah, great experience. Really, really recommended. Now number six is Ecotricity. Now they get a little bit of a bad rep, and rightly so, because a lot of their chargers are right outside motorway service stations. There's only one of them, and it's often parked with a, a petrol car parked right in front of them. Um, they're also not the most reliable charger. I hear so many people complaining about the CCS chargers. For Chadamo, yeah, you're pretty solid. I think they work really well. The 30p a unit, which is on our sort of scale, is getting to one of the cheaper ones for sort of um, a rapid charger. And the location of motorway services is really good. Just sort out the, those CCS chargers, um, Ecotricity, because the rest of your business is really good. And if you have your home energy through them, then I think it knocks it down to 15p a unit on road trips, which is pretty cheap. 
So yeah, sort out your CCS charges and then it'd be good. You've been there since day one with, um, in terms of helping EV drivers get around the UK. Let's get those CCS charges sorted and then you'll be awesome. Now on to one of the other big ones. This is BP Charge Masters Polar Membership. I've got a card and it costs me £7.85 a month. I don't actually use it that much, but the RFID cards are really, really reliable. The, the problem of using a mobile app to activate it is if you're not in a good signal area or there's some issues with the network, it's not ideal. So the RFID card's really good. So their pricing structure is a little bit more complicated in as much as the faster the charge the more expensive per unit which I think is fair it's a little bit complicated to be honest I don't overthink these things I just charge because I'm going to stop there I'm not going to sort of drive 20 miles to find a slightly cheaper charger so for example their fastest charges it's 40p a unit if you use a contactless credit card but 20p a unit if you've got a membership so like everything if you are going to be using these charges a lot get a membership also, one more thing about um, Polar Network is they have a lot of chargers in car parks. Places like Milton Keynes are literally flooded with Polar chargers. So if you work in Milton Keynes or you drive there a lot for shopping, it could be a really good option. But I'm going to come on to the destination chargers later on in this video, so stay tuned. On number four, we're going to be talking about home charging. And for example, Octopus Energy, which I'm a, a very proud customer of, and you'll see why in a minute. They do a standard tariff, it's about 14p a unit, and if you have an EV car, really you're gonna to want to get onto a electric car tariff. Now number three on our sort of top 10 countdown, giving us sort of a, an overview of the EV charging cost in the UK, is Octopus Energy's EV tariff, which is called GO. Now this is a standard rate tariff for most of the day, and then between half midnight and half four in the morning, the price drops to 5p a unit. This is a great time to charge your electric car. You're probably gonna be sleeping, you're not using the car, so get it on charge and get the benefit of 5p a unit. This is probably the perfect tariff if you're a nine to five sort of office worker, although COVID and stuff messing that up, but you know, normally. So you come home from work, maybe six o'clock at night, you put your dinner on, you put the TV on, stick the washing on, go to bed, wake up in the morning, go back to work. So it's a very good tariff for that because the evening prices are standard. You set your car to start charging at half past midnight and it's charged up in the sort of few hours overnight. Really good way. And as with all of Octopus's tariffs, if you check the description, you'll see my referral code, which gives you 50 quid credit and I get 50 quid credit as well, which helps run this channel, which is great. So thank you very much for doing that. Now, on to number two, and this is the free destination chargers. Now, Tesla have um, a really good scheme where if you run a hotel or a cafe or something like that, you can apply and get chargers, I believe, still for free for all the hardware on the assumption that you will give your customers free electricity. Podpoint and Polar um, do similar, and lots of other networks do the sort of same sort of setup as well. So basically there's a charging port and you plug in your type two cable or whatever. Sometimes it has tethered like the Tesla ones. The other thing to consider is if you're a Polar member, then a lot of their charges are free um, in car parks and places like that. So it's worth sort of doing a bit of research if you're gonna be spending a whole day in say Birmingham or Milton Keynes or wherever, you know, check what the charging situation is like before you go. I use Zabmap for pretty much all my research. It's a brilliant little app. The other thing to consider about the Tesla option is if you buy a Tesla and you use a referral code, like mine in the description, you get a thousand miles of free charging, which is great. And then when you refer other people to buy Teslas, you get a thousand miles and they get a thousand miles. So if you're doing a road trip, say down to Spain, which is what Teslas are just brilliant at, you can probably get most of the way for free. I don't know how many miles it is to Spain, but you know, you, a thousand miles for free is pretty good. So yeah, there's quite a few free options out there, aren't there? Now onto the big one, the negatives. The one that generally makes people's minds go 
is a negative. So it doesn't happen like every night, but if you're on Octopus Energy, you can go onto a tariff called Agile. Now Agile changes the price of your energy every half an hour. And there's plenty of apps that you can download to tell you what it is. But fundamentally, between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m., it's very expensive. The clever part of Agile is that it's designed to balance the grid. And what that means is overnight on a windy night, when there's tons and tons of energy coming out of the wind turbines, Agile is, well, basically the wholesale energy price can go negative, which means that um, there's too much energy in the system. And they are encouraging people such as electric car owners who can be flexible about when they charge to use the energy at that point. And sometimes it goes negative, which is really cool. Now, I'm actually using Octopus Agile. I've got another video which I'll link above. And it talks about how me as a family man using the house, so we both work from home a lot. So our energy uses is generally all day. It's not like a nine to five only use in the evening. So we just don't use the sort of wide goods between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. We'll still do cooking. We'll still, you know, use the TV and stuff for our girls. But fundamentally, we try to move as much of energy outside of that usage. And our average price is sort of eight or nine p a unit. And that's for ev everything in our household as a you know family of four. Potentially, you can get your car charged as a negative, but most nights I'm charging a sort of four, five, six pence, which is still really cheap. So on the whole, with charging the car and running the household, I am saving quite a bit of money compared to having Octopus Go or just a standard rate. So as I've said before, if you use my referral code, you get 50 quid. I get 50 quid. Helps to sort of support the channel. And that's really cool. And it'd be most appreciative. So as a final summary, you can see that the price of charging your electric car can change quite a bit. Please don't be put off going for electric car. It's even at the most expensive, it's, you know, about the same price as running a petrol or diesel car. And you're so rarely going to use that. And there's a lot of convenience value priced in to those quick chargers. For most of the time, you're going to be charging at home, probably. Or if you don't have a home charger, then you'll probably find something local that works really well for you. Download the app called ZapMap. I I'm, have no affiliation with them whatsoever. They're just a cool company and the app is really good. On a road trip, spend five minutes just planning out what you're going to do. Check some other videos on my channel about how to plan one. It's not complicated and fundamentally, the whilst the cost might vary a little bit, what stays the same is EV's lack of pollution and it's just creating nicer, cleaner air for us all. And most um, EV chargers use renewable energy as well. So it's a real win-win situation for you, for me, for everyone who breathes in the air around your car and for the planet. So yeah, as always, comment below if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy to help. And if you really want, you can drop me an email. And there's my dog saying, come and play with me. So I better go. <laughs> See you later. Bye.